On behalf of the OOIDA Foundation, we would like to welcome you to this session of OOIDA's Business Education Series of Online Training. This series is the most comprehensive series of business education that has been designed exclusively for the professional truck driver. There are a lot of drivers who are really good at driving a truck, but struggle to make a living in the industry. With these presentations, we're trying to help the drivers who excel at operating a truck understand how to be a successful business person. This education series is intended to help drivers navigate the business side of the trucking industry by providing an accessible and relevant introduction to the management principles of operating a successful trucking business. We would also like to congratulate the thousands of attendees who have taken part in this series. Your overwhelming response has helped to ensure that these programs will continue into the future. This program is being sponsored in part by Trucker Tax Service, Fine Truck Service Incorporated, Arrow Truck Sales, DAT Solutions, Road Law, Landline Now, and Landline Magazine. If you're not familiar with these organizations, you should be. These organizations are truly friends of the professional trucker. Please give them your support. All right, let's start this program off by saying right up front, the road to passing a new entrance safety audit can be a pretty rough road. And unfortunately, not everyone completes the trip. If you've got the guts to take on this challenge, We'll teach you the tips and tricks gained from helping hundreds of drivers get down this road successfully. If you're going to go down this road with us, I'm going to tell you right up front, it's going to require commitment and attention to detail and a lot of work on your part. But if you've come this far, it's obvious that you're serious about completing this trip. My name's Tom Gann, and I'll be your host for this program. In this program, I'll be joined by Tom Weekly. Tom is the Director of Operations for the OOIDA Foundations. What Tom and I have done is taken all the steps required to pass a new entrance safety audit and divided them into five parts. Each part's going to be approximately 20 minutes in length and filled with a lot of detailed information. Each part builds on the information provided in the previous part. So for that reason, we recommend that you start with part one and work your way through each of the individual parts in order one through five. And of course, the great thing about online education is you can go back and replay any part of any program as many times and as often as you would like. In this program, we're going to be talking about FMCSA's 16 Deadly Sins. In this part three, we're going to be covering what FMCSA considers sins seven through 16. We've got a lot of material to cover, so let's get started. Okay, knowingly allowing or requiring, permitting, or authorizing an employee with a commercial driver's license which is suspended, revoked, or canceled by a state or is disqualified to operate a commercial motor vehicle. Again, that's the idea of you need, if it's not you, you can't let anybody else do it either. If, if You've got to check everybody's background. Make sure their license has not been suspended. Just because he hands you his license and you make a copy of it, doesn't mean it's good. It means you need to check that out. You need to get that. You need to run that through the through the uh, Department of Motor Vehicles to see, get his permission to do that, and to see if indeed he has any violations or if it's still valid at that point. How often do we need to do that? Is that something we need to do once a year? You need. It's required that you do it once a year for sure. Uh, certainly, you want to do it to anybody that you're thinking about hiring, uh, and. To, you want to do that before you ever hire them because you want to know what kind of a person you're going to hire. I assume you do that. But unfortunately, again, you know, my brother drives for me, my brother-in-law, my, I don't know, mother-in-law drives for me, <laughs> whatever it is, and you just don't bother to do that. And, and again, they may be in that situation. You may got, have a driver that you've known for years. His CDL looks good. 
he may have been driving for a carrier who he thought paid off his fine or his violation and it never happened. So you need to run that background check on that on a driver's license to make sure. And again, that does go in the files that we'll talk about a little bit later. Okay, we spent a lot of time with drugs and, and now the CDL. What else can there be? Oh, there's so many more things to come. And the 16 deadly sins are really the biggies, and they'll, they'll cover most of the things. Next was knowingly allowing or requiring, permitting, or authorizing a driver to drive who is disqualified to drive a commercial motor vehicle. Now, wait a minute. You just said we had to be make sure his license was good. Is isn't that the same thing? Not, not necessarily. Uh, he can still have a CDL, but there may be something else that disqualifies this person. And you are, as part of your safety management system and a part of knowing the regulations, you have to know the physical qualifications also of that of, of what constitutes a safe driver. So if you knowingly allow somebody who's maybe had a sudden loss of hearing or his eyesight suddenly got bad or he starts telling you about some of these, uh, maybe he's been diagnosed with uh, epilepsy or something, like that, you know, and those, some of those things that would disqualify him. And you are aware of that knowingly. You are aware of that. And yet you let that driver drive then, you know, or yourself, as far as that goes, if you're the driver, that would be a disqualifying uh, impairment. And so if, by knowingly let that person do that, you are, you don't have good safety management systems in place. And that is considered to be a very serious violation. They will deny your authority. You, they'll actually inactivate your authority. And then they're also going to be concerned with your financial responsibilities. Do you have basically insurance? Do you have the right amount of coverage? And I know we covered that in another webinar, the amount that you have to have in place. Uh, and if you, and they will check that. And if, if your insurance is up to date and you, you have it on file and it shows that you had the correct amount, uh, 750000 if you are, you know, a, a, at least that minimum amount for public liability. And if you're a hazmat carrier, at least a million or five million, depending on what you haul. So they'll check that out to see that you have that. And there's a differing amount of money that's another deadly sin. If you are carrying passengers, uh, those are you talking about passengers in my truck. In my <laughs> no, talking about, we're talking about bus bus drivers pre right. predominantly. Uh, they they'll they have a different financial responsibility. But uh, that again is a, is a deadly sin if you don't have that financial responsibility. We'll kind of go through these others quickly, too. If you use a disqualified driver in any, for any reason at all, uh, knowingly using one, again, it's that matter. If you have systems in place to show that you're checking everybody out, then there really shouldn't be a problem with any of that. Tom, it sounds to me like we're spending an awful lot of time talking about drivers, having other drivers. And a lot of the guys that are going to be on, on here, they're new, they're just getting started. They don't have a bunch of drivers. It's just them. It's just them, and they are the drivers. So all these things apply to them if they, use, if they know that they've been disqualified and they still drive, you know, and they, if they know it, that would be definitely a knowingly using a driver, you know, disqualified. And then again, you know, you have to, and part of this is you really have to know the regulations, if, if because they're going to ask you these kinds of things, and they're going to ask you questions while they're in there to make sure you understand the regulations, because they don't want you operating as a motor carrier unless you do. So you are, so you need to understand the regulations. If you haven't bothered to look at them, if you kind of know the basics, but that's about all, you could be in a little bit of a problem here because they're going to be, they're going to ask you questions more than just the basics. You know, you know that you have to be 21 years old. You know that you have to be able to uh, speak English and converse in English and those kinds of things, which are qualifying events for you as a driver. But, you know, if there's any reason you have been disqualified, and again, it's one of those things you need to check because if you have been disqualified by uh, the state or whatever, and that can happen for a lot of different reasons. There are people who don't ch pay child support. And in some states, they will disqualify you as a driver until you catch up on your child support. That may be something that you don't normally, maybe in your state, you don't do that, but another state can disqualify you. And that state recognizes that. So you could be caught up in that. So check it out carefully. And you are the driver. All of this applies to you. So when I say drivers, I mean you, even though you're the owner operator now under your own authority, you're also for the most part, the driver at the same time. So this applies to you personally.
They're going to require that you keep logbooks, obviously, and they're going to make sure that everybody who works for you as a driver has a logbook. And so if you're not keeping logbooks, then that's an immediate disqual You're going to be disqualified. They're going to make you inactive. How long do I have to keep those for? Those you have to keep for at least six months. And believe me, you don't want to keep them any longer than six months. They are re you're required to keep the last six months and to be able to produce those for the last six months along with some, any other type of... of uh, yeah, but for my tax records, I need to keep it a lot longer than that. You would want to keep it for longer than that, and you keep the other six months or whatever amount of time you have someplace else. And I tell you that because you only show them what you're required to show them. You're not being uh, tricky. You're not trying to get by on anything. It's just a matter of, I am required to keep six months, and here are my six months. I do not have a ready access to the others, and I'm not supposed to have. I'm not required to have ready access for the last months prior to that. So always and every time you finish that and you move to the next month, you want to take those and remove them from the files and put them in a separate file someplace, separate building someplace. I don't care, but a good rule of thumb is provide them with what is required. Don't be volunteering anything else. It's not required I wouldn't put it out there for them to see. And you'll have to have, obviously, other types of documentation uh, that you've had during those six months also. There's there's a lot of things like your toll receipts and those kinds of things you're supposed to keep for that period of time also to verify your your logbook. So, but anything past six months, I, for, for that, I put it someplace else. That's just, just something I would tell you to do. Uh, you can do it, obviously, but at least have the six months I just wouldn't keep any more than that. And it's another thing while I'm on that subject, don't get to, um, don't get to visiting too much. Sometimes you can get yourself in trouble by relating about how your driving experiences and experiences you've had and bad things that have happened to you. And, and he's looking at your log books or looking at your records and saying, wait a minute, when did this happen? And then starts running a background check and so forth and find out maybe you're disqualified, didn't know it. Maybe, you know, he didn't know it immediately. Uh, maybe he can see that you are over on your hours of service and you didn't record it right, all those kinds of things. Just, you know, be businesslike, professional, courteous, and efficient, but don't take it much further than that. You're strictly businessman. You're a businessman now. Be a businessman. Okay, let's look at the last couple of them real quick here. Requiring or permitting the operation of a commercial motor vehicle declared out of service before repairs are made. And again, that's something you'll have to keep another file on, which we'll talk about on different, different things that you've done to the truck. If it gets an out of service violation, you must show that you've corrected that problem and have that a file on that. If you don't, if it looks like you drove that thing and you have no, no evidence that you corrected it, that's an immediate failure. And you're talking about repair receipts. Yes. Or if you've done it yourself. There are things, some things you can do yourself. But you show, you date it, this is what I did, and I got an approval from whoever that put you out of service that it's okay now. Or if they put you out of service for a certain amount of time, my logbook indicates that. Whatever it is, proof that you've taken care of the out of service criteria. Now, if you, if you got written up because your windshield wipers were bad, you can't just walk the guy out there and say, look at my new windshield wipers. <laughs> that, might, that might work, but you have to show that you did it during that time right afterward that you, you got that violation before you drove again. Because if it, you didn't, you say, yeah, I just put those on because you got carried away and you got that violation, you know, three weeks ago or a month ago, and you just now put them on, he's going to say, whoa, you, you've been driving that thing when you were supposedly out of service for that. So he say, well, I never drove in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> you can try all kinds of things, but it's just better. You know, you want to show that you've done it immediately. Failing to correct an out-of-service defects listed by a driver in a driver vehicle inspection report before the vehicle is operated again. So, and you have to keep those by vehicle inspection reports for three months. So, if you do have a driver, and this is only if you have a driver. In this case, it is only apply if you have a driver. If you're a single truck a driver owner, other than yourself. Other than yourself, right. Then you don't have to keep those inspection reports. But if you have a driver, you will have to keep those for three months. And so, you know, if, and if, he, if that driver lists something on there that needed to be corrected and you did not correct it, you don't show that you've corrected it, that's an that's immediate a failure of your of your of your audit and so you know that's a very important thing 
And using a commercial vehicle, not periodically inspected, would be number the 16th deadly sin. So you have to keep maintenance records of your truck. Obviously, you have to once a year maintenance, overall maintenance. But they're also going to want to make sure that you, you know, you checked your oil, you had your oil changes, you did all the other things to show that you're maintaining a safe truck. You check the brakes, whatever happens to Your be. pre-trip inspection, is that, would that be part of that? That can be part of that, yes. And that's, that's part of the periodic maintenance that you have. But they want a more thorough inspection also. You know, you did look at the brakes and you had them adjusted or whatever it happens to be because nobody's brakes goes forever without having some kind of adjustment made. Or you checked your tire depth or and so forth. So, and if you're going to have an, a whole file on all those, all the little maintenance things you've done, that tells that person inspecting you or doing the audit that you care about your vehicle maintenance and your truck and that you're concerned about that and that leads to better safety on the roads. Okay, it looks like we're completely out of time. If you've got any questions or comments about this program, or if you'd like a certificate of completion for this program, just send us an email to businesseducation at ooida.com. And don't forget to tell us which program you're referring to. And please don't forget our sponsors who take educating America's professional truck drivers as seriously as we do. We hope you'll join us online again for additional programming in the OOIDA Business Education Series. This series has been designed to give serious business education to truck drivers who take their business seriously. For information on all of the educational programming provided by OOIDA, visit us at www.ooidaonlineeducation.com. And don't forget, OOIDA has been fighting for the rights of all truckers since 1973. You can join the fight by becoming a member of our organization. Give us a call at 800-444-5791.